rubbish as normal. We're normally yeah. good for like a month or so, so we we're do, back! We do like four in a day and then we're, we're out. Um, but today, to celebrate being back and our promise to you guys to do more, um, we thought we'd tell the story of Twice a Health because it's something we get asked about a lot and something that we feel like we tell the story so much, yeah. we feel like we tell it all the time and I almost apologise to people when I tell it again because I'm like, they must have heard it, I've told it so many times. But anyway, we thought we'd just kind of ramble through it a bit today um, with no audience other than each other. Yeah. So hopefully you'll get some nitty gritty bits that we may have missed out in the past. Indeed, so I think the first thing we need to clarify is that we're not related. We're not twins, we're not sisters. <laughs> um, and and you, can, you can tell by the fact that I always have a coffee in my hand and Emily doesn't even drink coffee. So. That's not a genetic Well, you thing. know, some brother, my brother likes coffee. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my mother um, likes coffee, my dad likes coffee, everybody in my family likes coffee. And yeah, my like family coffee. like coffee and I don't like coffee, mm. so you know, proving yeah, that wrong now. there. We didn't actually even done. meet till we were 18. Um, no, at uni! Yeah, we met at UIC, which is now known as Cardiff Met. Yep. Um, so yeah, we were at university in Cardiff for three years, we were on different campuses, different courses. We met through a mutual friend over Jaeger Bombs. And we did not do. do that much running, well I didn't, apart from running to the nightclub. So we were into short dresses, big heels, like proper big heels, fake big eyelashes, but fake tan. Yeah, a lot that of fake tan. I had very white hair. <laughs> but actually, it wasn't white, it was kind of like yellow. Kind of yellow, nice. Yeah. Um, but it's not our classic kind of Instagram story of a lot of people were like, oh, I, I came into fitness, I found fitness. We both actually were runners anyway. So even though we weren't living necessarily the most healthy lifestyle, if you want to call it, yes, we obviously ate some bad food and did drink alcohol, but overall we still yeah. lived a pretty good life. But our background, we actually realised we raced against each other when we were kids. So we both did 800 and 1500 metres on the Chasing track. Chasing each other around the track. Yeah, and cross Young country. Age. Yeah. So we will have actually crossed paths at some point. Um, again, by a kind of always being active when we were younger, always being kind of healthy as, as people want to call it. Um, I grew up riding horses, I competed kind of at quite a high level all of my life and so was always outside whether that was scooping shit, literally. Um, or hey, actually you can't say that word on our channel. <laughs> oh, I swear we'll bleep that one out. <laughs> um, and so I was always active. You grew up basically on a farm even though you didn't really live on a farm in yeah. like nowhere. <laughs> um, so yeah, kind of middle of nowhere outside of Cambridge. Very much was just, just outside, um, literally running around trampoline, um, swimming pool. Like, I was just always outside with my sister. The one I am actually related to, not this one. Um, like <laughs> yeah, we look very alike. My mum was, is, was, is a very good cook um, and we were always helping in the kitchen where we could where it would just be like peeling vegetables and stuff but I was very aware of where my food came from how it went from literally at being pulled out the ground in the garden to being put onto the table so knew the process of where my food came from and really respected that from an early age I think that's really helped me um, going through either through university where you struggle to learn then how to like deal with life on your yeah. own um, but I think it gave them that base kind of knowledge of um, how to eat well and be healthy. Yeah, and again, my mum my mom cooked very well. I'm not sure I took so much of it away. Keen yeah. in the kitchen, Hannah? Um, no, the horses took up a lot of my time, sadly. Okay. So, you know, my priorities were elsewhere. Sorry, cooked food. But I, yeah, <laughs> I definitely ate good food. <laughs> how much, but I helped with it, I'm not sure. Sorry, mum. But I definitely ate good food and I grew up very living a very active lifestyle. Both me and my brother were very, very sporty. And um, my dad works in sport, so again, that kind of like infused a lot of it into our lives. Um, and I loved being active, I loved being outside. And uh, even through sort of college and stuff, I was active. Um, I went to a very kind of heavy sporting school and then I actually made the decision to go to college, um, not at the school I was at, uh, where we had a little bit more flexibility and we didn't have to play sport, but I did still train, I did still go to the gym, I did still run um, a fair amount. And then we went to university um, and I actually, I didn't, I didn't continue my athletics um, career at university, I decided to prioritise other things. <laughs> Socialising. Socialising, yeah. But you did still run, so this is the one we yeah. then realised that we raced against each other, because I did continue my athletics into university. Um, it ended up in a stress fracture, just from probably training mixed with high heels. I honestly think that was the problem, because I would finish training at 8 o'clock at night, like power walk back to 
um, halls and literally like I'd be getting ready while cooking dinner and then I would put on big heels and you'd dance for like four hours or yeah. more and I think like calf muscle just being completely contracted up like that just absolutely screwed my legs over a technical term. Um, and you both <laughs> trained for Cardiff Half Marathon? Yes. I don't know what year I trained for then, second maybe? Well, second year, yeah. yeah. So we both trained for Cardiff Half Marathon and um, I again then slightly prioritised the social element of my lifestyle by going to Thailand for six weeks and thought that I'd be able to train there. Um, no. no. <laughs> Very hot and there was other fun things to do. Um, but I did attempt to a lot and that resulted in me, I don't, I don't know if it was a stress fracture then, um, but it definitely wasn't, something wasn't right in my um, shin, shins. Uh, and I had always suffered with kind of shin splints um, throughout athletics, uh, but I, at that point, and actually rather sensibly, um, just stopped running uh, and didn't do Cardiff Half Marathon. Um, and I guess it's around then that we started getting a bit more into strength training. Yeah, I think because my stress fracture was earlier than yours, yeah. mine was in my first year. So I had started doing weights as part of the athletics club because I wasn't do doing the training sessions, I was just going for the strength sessions. And you started going to Pure Gym in Cardiff. I did, yeah. So then when I realised I wasn't really running anymore and I wasn't enjoying going to athletics and not being able to run, I started going to the gym with you. Um, my boyfriend at the time was um, learning how to become PT yeah. and so he programmed quite a lot of our strength sessions. Um, it very much was at that time was like a bodybuilding style just because that's all people really knew with the, there wasn't really a specific where like, I don't know, that just didn't seem to be around. No yeah. one in the gyms was training like that. But it very much was yeah. like an arm day, yeah. a leg day. It wasn't and functional. It. Yeah, it, but it, it, and it, it wasn't a functional style of training, it was just kind of trendy then. And, yeah. and also it was just as kind of Instagram was on the, on the app. And, and that's where you got your workout inspiration from, and, and so you'd, you'd search the hashtag bicep workout. Yeah, or leg day. And and yeah, and you'd do whatever whatever it said to do. Um, and we, we laugh about it a little bit now because despite not running a huge amount, um, that was definitely still where kind of our passion our passion lay. Um, we just didn't do a huge amount of it. And, and, and as we did begin to sort of start running a little bit again towards, I'd say third year, we'd run to the gym and run back. Yeah. We'd still train chest and triceps. Now... Don't know about you guys, but I don't Crappy use choice. yeah. <laughs> I don't use them that much uh, running, or certainly not enough to dedicate a whole day of training yeah. to them. Um, so we kind of laugh about it now, but I don't think I would have changed the way we trained. We enjoyed it. It gave us an incredible amount of confidence yeah, in the gym as well, and and we learned a lot. Um, whether that was by a kind of the food medic who, who yeah. at that time was kind of our our um, inspiration. Our inspiration. Still is, um, but uh, we learnt a lot and just and I made a lot of mistakes. God, don't get me wrong. I ate a lot of avocado and I hate avocado. Oh, so really? Do you remember at the end of every workout you said like ten minute ad blitz? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Or we had that routine. Blitz. It'd be like ten of these, ten yeah. of these, ten of those. Yeah, and our <laughs> lower backs were probably about this far off the ground. Um, and and I'm not sure I, I actually ever got a six pack. No, we didn't. Sorry. Um, but. <laughs> But although we very much enjoyed that style of training, I wouldn't say we had a great deal of purpose. No. Uh, looking back on it, and perhaps we weren't even aware of it then, but our purpose probably was quite aesthetic based. Yeah. Um, because we didn't have another goal. We hadn't. We we didn't think like that then. Yeah. Um, and and also you weren't told to think like that then. Yeah. Social media didn't didn't really not allow you obviously to think about how you like, but it didn't it didn't encourage you to yeah. think any other way than to go to the gym and get bicep day done. Yeah. Um, we do intervals and stuff. We yeah. Just get a and then we could. We would go run and yeah. do the other side. And do, there was a really good hill in Cardiff called King Coyd. Yeah, it was terrific. I ran it about three times. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then we managed to both graduate uni. Woohoo! Uh, Hannah moved straight to London. She had a, um, not it, temp, what I'm Internship. Internship, that's yeah. what. An internship already lined up. Um, I thought I'd never live in London, <laughs> ever. I remember like when we were young, we used to get dressed up and come down to London and it'd be fun, but I was like, it's disgusting, why would anyone yeah. live here? And here we are. Um, to be fair, I, I don't think I did really. I remember when I, when I got my internship, um, I got a very cool internship with Cancer Research um, and their marketing department in London and I lived just outside Notting Hill, um, which was very nice. And this really cute studio, yeah, it was it like, a, like adult student living, wasn't it? Yeah. You could literally brush your teeth, go to the loo, and, and sort of practically sit on your bed all at the same time, um, which was kind of fun. Um, but it was a good location, it was just a Portobello Road, and I dragged Emily up a lot um, to come with me. Yeah, and, um, but it was great, and, and eventually sort of after a few visits, 
and a few really good restaurants, um, I convinced Emily that she should move up with me. So Emily then went to help her dad in Derbyshire, and so I was left with the responsibility of finding us a house. Now I didn't. She know hasn't ever been left this responsibility again. No. Um, <laughs> I didn't know much about London, but I did know one thing: in that Inferno's was the place to be on a Friday and a Saturday night. Ideally, those mornings as well, Sunday morning. Um, that that is what I knew. So obviously, top of the agenda was how close can we, how close to can we get to Inferno's? I think I managed about four oh, minute walk. Yeah, I would say it's about yeah. four minutes. Yeah. So that's where we lived. Um, you couldn't move in the kitchen. One of the bedrooms was the kitchen was a corridor. Yeah. Not one of the bedrooms was about as long as me, but obviously I got that one um, because I decided on the house. Um, the didn't really have a living room. Didn't have a sofa. Didn't have a television. Uh, we had two de armchairs that that reclined. Only one of them reclined. Only one of them reclined, yeah. so that was good. We lived in Clapham for a year. We did. <laughs> and it was great, we went to Inferno's pretty much every weekend, we really made the most of that. Um, but after a year, we we did decide that perhaps... Um, it was a bit that, small. Yeah, it was a little small. Um, so Emily was handed the role of, of finding a house. And we did much better. Wait, we've got to go back, because we, we did... First London Marathon happened oh, at that house. Oh, yeah, we've reverse, been reverse, reverse. Yeah, so still living in Clapham. Bread uh, yeah, so I worked in a bread cafe in Clapham that did toast during the day and pizza during the evening. It was fantastic. It actually, was a really good restaurant. It was restaurant. really good. And then, no, um, so yeah, I was working at One Rebel making lots of smooth smoothies. Indeed. Um, <laughs> I was uh, I had very, very luckily landed myself uh, quite a cool job working in the marketing department at D&D London. Um, and I worked in Bluebird. I worked in the little office there for about four months and then um, again very lucky and, and cannot thank D&D enough for the opportunity they gave me I got a promotion um, and was moved to Quaglinos and I was given a very cool opportunity there to kind of work on their membership club and to work in marketing. So I got a phone call from Hannah and I got this place in London Marathon and I was like amazing like I have felt like I've always wanted to run this and I was like oh wait you mean like the London Marathon that's in like 10 weeks time yeah yeah that one great isn't it? it and I was like hmm yeah so although we were both like runners from a young age. I mean, we did 800, 1500 cross country. It was like 5K maximum. You ran till you wanted to fall over or be sick at the end. Yeah, and you like pushed yourself to the limit. Um, we had done, well, I ended up doing one half marathon. Oh no, I've done two half marathons. I had done one. And we'd done a 10K. Um, but I remember going out on like a 7K training run for that and we were like, it's a really long way. Yeah, like, we had to walk happy, a little but... bit. Like, that was a really big achievement yeah. for us to run 7K. And I think that's really important to remember because people are like, oh, we've always been runners, so it's fine. We, yeah, we have always been runners, but it's very different running 1,500 metres as fast as you can um, <laughs> to running 26 miles. Um, so please remember that there was a point where we ran 7K, and I know that's still a long way for a lot of people, but where we really hit a wall, and I'd yeah. say we probably had to walk at about 4K. Um, hangover, again, didn't help. Um, but yeah, so I signed us up to London Marathon. I thought it was too good of an opportunity to miss. And um, and so we did, and, and obviously we trained and trained and trained, and, and like any first time marathoner, we just ran. Yeah. We ran almost every day. So we, because um, we were doing a lot of strength training there, yeah. we were like, right, need to stop that, don't want to put any muscle mass on, it'll make us heavy, let's just run. Yeah. Um, which of course resulted in whether or not it was linked to my Thailand adventures and <laughs> me getting what they thought was a stress fracture. Uh, I didn't actually get an MRI because I'm a fool. Um, they very expensive as well. They are fair. very expensive and I decided that actually I would just not run. Um, and my physio told me that I couldn't do the London Marathon, um, to which I nodded and agreed but I had absolutely every single intention of doing it. Uh, and I, I lived on a spin bike for the next six weeks whilst Emily slogged through some very long training runs by herself, rewarding herself with kilograms of peanut butter. Yeah. Um, anyway, we completed London Marathon, you'll be glad to know. And then we didn't run for about six months. Yeah. <laughs> Hannah Basically. quit her job the next day. Yeah, I actually forgot about that bit. So <laughs> I, um, I had, a, I guess, a midlife crisis and I, I worked in a very good cool job, life. like I said, but I worked in a tiny office With no windows. that had no windows and because of the industry that I was in, it was kind of like everyone just stayed really late because there was drinks and food uh, and I was desperate to get out and go running or go to the gym. And it just it just wasn't the wasn't the job for me. Um, so I quit and I rang my dad again, poor man. And I said, Dad, I've left my job and I want to be a personal trainer. And he was like, Go back, go back <laughs> Say and apologize. You're sorry. Say you're sorry, they'll take you back. And I was like, No, I've made my decision. Um, it sounds way more tragic than it was. It's actually very lucky and a very good friend of mine now. Um, was advertising a job on Facebook <laughs> uh, for a marketing assistant in um, a PT studio and also a personal training centre. Um, so I managed to get the job there and they also put me through my personal training qualification which was amazing. 
and um, and we kind of began to grow twice the health at this point. Um, we'd obviously documented our London Marathon journey. That was how it began, uh, and we began. This was to actually post more. you made me quit my job. I did make you quit your job yeah. because you hated it for about yeah. a year. So I was literally it was like forcing her to write this letter. Uh, I was like, just quit, just quit, we'll do twice the hell. Um, and actually around the time I guess I started working for a company called Fresh Fitness Food. I worked five hours a week on their social media. We started to get a bit more of an introduction to the industry. Um, yeah. Whether that was by you having more time to kind of explore the industry and get to know bits of it that you wanted to get to know. Um, or... Start like finally practicing nutrition, which yeah. is what I started at university. I started working for a company called Live Fit. I started taking a boot camp in Fulham. This is we had moved to Fulham. Yeah. Um, and I was at dinner every morning and also one weekend and also once on a Tuesday night. We've missed a little bit as well because we actually, in the meantime, in between all the job changes and everything, and just after the London Marathon, we decided to go and visit your dad in Arizona and hike the Grand Canyon. Now, that was an incredible experience, one that I didn't tolerate that well, I did not. <laughs> Um, but it is one that inspired our probably biggest and best adventure to date. Yeah, probably because it was our first. But we came out of the canyon after a horrific... We hiked it through the night as well, hours. just to... Yeah, and decided that we wanted to run it. And, and that was something that we decided literally as soon as we stepped out of the canyon and we were hooked on it from that point. It took us two years to yeah. finally get around to doing it. Um, we ran a fair amount in between those two years, but not hugely. We trained... Well, like half marathons and 10Ks. Yeah, we trained in some strange ways. Um, but anyway, we, we got to the canyon um, and we actually went with a friend of ours, Molly. She dropped us on the north rim of the canyon and we ran... It was well, minus four as well. It was on the minus north rim. four, yeah. And we ran what we thought was going to be a 24 mile route through the canyon. Um, it actually okay. turned out to be 30 miles, which is 50K. Um, but it was one of the most humbling and incredible experiences of my entire life and still remains probably my favourite kind of adventure of ours that we've done to date because it was our first, I think. Um, <laughs> and, and that, that you know, sparked a flame. Yeah, and I think we've just realised how much we enjoyed the trail. We've come from um, track and cross country and then even into half marathons and 10Ks. And again, like, you're so obsessed with the clock, even though you try not to be. Yeah. It's always in your head. I think finally we have found this, this adventure where no one asked us how long it took, or if they did, it was just like for a sense of scale. They yeah. weren't like, oh, is that fast or slow? No one asked us how fast we ran it. They were like, what did you see? Like, what was the temperature? What was the altitude? That's all they wanted to know. And we're like, this is insane. This is so cool. We had such a sense of adventure and passion that had come out of this more than any other and race. Then, sadly, you kind of lose that a little bit with a marathon. Um, so, yep, that sparked a flame, and Hannah was given the choice of the next 50 kilometre adventure. Mm. So we decided that would be our thing. We just went like the adventures. houses, didn't it? Yeah. Hannah's choice. Yeah, so Hannah chose the Great Wall of China. Mm. Which I know you're thinking, great idea. It is a great idea, apart from most of the Great Wall of China is prohibited. Um, and I chose... And 3,000 years old. Yeah, and I chose a bit of it that was prohibited. Um, so poor Emily had the job of mapping this 50 kilometre route along the Great Wall of China, which she did. Um, we managed to find this incredible guy who'd done it about eight years ago, and we basically mapped our route on his. Now, the wall has changed slightly in the eight years. Um, parts of it have been closed, and we hit that wall, literally. We ran up the canyon in uh, July, yep. went out the following March, and we were super excited, super ready. We'd had a slight issue in that we'd had to remap the route about That's why we weren't even where yeah. now where the guy had helped us. We weren't allowed to stay in that village anymore. I think Putin was staying some well he was there, so we assumed that yeah. was the reason they weren't allowed to tell us. So we had to go to another village and so I had to remap the route with about a week's notice. Yeah. And that's yeah, so we struggled. So we were on the bit that was prohibited. It was three thousand years old. It was basically rubble and brambles. It was about um, this wide. No yeah, if it was still there, it was tiny. Or where the towers had fallen down, it was just like this, but and big rocks. Yeah, it was like someone had just picked up a big pile of rocks and just dumped them. Um, so yeah, we were a bit unsuccessful in trying to run on the wall. It took us like four hours to do the fifteen kilometers. Yeah. yeah. So we turned around and then just basically ran through the villages of rats surrounding um, the wall at the bottom, and it was beautiful. We met amazing people who thought we were insane. Um, huge language barrier. I've never experienced that before. No. Um, but again, we had. Like, it was very tough. I think that is the hardest thing I've ever done, Yeah, actually. and it was really hot, and we weren't expecting to be out for that long. Um, so it was definitely, again, another very humbling experience, and it taught us a lot. Um, but it definitely didn't knock us, because we then set our hearts on another yeah. one later that year. Uh, and we chose this one. 
uh, Great Ocean Road and that was probably our most successful to date in terms of we followed the route the whole way. It was actually a relatively flat, like compared to... Yeah, it was just you going up and down to the yeah. beach, so it was a great ocean road in Australia. Yeah, uh, and it was incredible. We had Jamie and Will from Jamie and the Jam join us, and Will ran the whole thing with us. Jamie caught us so much good on camera and, and, and created an incredible kind of piece of memories for us. Yeah. Um, we also did a bit of traveling in Australia. And, and again, we came back from that super inspired. But we also came back in a slightly new place in that we, we've grown twice the health quite a lot now. And it was time to us to kind of bring Twice Health to life in, um, in I guess, a more kind of accessible way. Um, make it a bit more commercial. Um, Most of our following is in London. Um, yeah. Like it is a very big bubble of our following. And I think, although people get inspired by our big adventures, they also know they can't do it. We funded them all ourselves, so it's very expensive to go yeah. do. But it's something we were very passionate about, for not to have a an expensive holiday in like Ibiza or somewhere yeah. like that we wanted to go do these things um, but obviously we know they are, are inaccessible so yeah we wanted to bring it home and so many wanted to start running with us so we started run clubs yeah that was that and with that we entered London Marathon um, with a charity time. called Sparks and we took um, eight others with us on this London Marathon adventure some friends, some influencers, some people we just forced into it um, <laughs> and we had this incredible kind of five months I guess training together and um, doing races together which brought us to London Marathon and it was kind of it was cool for us because it was a big circle we'd we'd gone through so much with Twice the Health and we'd learned so much and we came back to this marathon not knowing everything gosh don't get me wrong we definitely didn't know everything we still had it we had then and still do have our incredible coach Brad on side and um, who actually run the London Marathon with us and so we just came into it with a lot more knowing and, and as a result obviously not that again we we didn't plan to go in chasing a time as you say you always do and people have the idea of a good time um, but we went into it a lot stronger and, and, and obviously completed it slightly quicker um, but also ran it happy or as happy as we could on that particular day when it was absolutely boiling <laughs> um, and and we came out of it in a totally different place than we yeah. came out of it in 2015 we came out of it wanting to do more um, now I say we came out in a totally different place I came out with a stress fracture um, an actual <laughs> diagnosed stress fracture this time um, which was a bit of a knock because I would really enjoyed training for the marathon I'd ran it quite strong um, I felt quite good um, and so it was a bit of a kick in the teeth to, to kind of be hit with that um, but onwards and upwards and Em had set a new goal for that year yeah well I mean you set the goal for me really well yeah she, she's I didn't really, have really good at cycling and swimming as well as running and had considered doing had done triathlons with me and done really well and I was like you should do a half Ironman because there's, some of our friends are planning on doing it and you'd be great so Em set this goal of, of doing a half Ironman in September yeah so we actually then alongside Oh wait, to go back a tiny bit, so our run club started oh, yeah. in the lead up to the 2018 London Marathon, the one where we took eight others with us, um, and we started them from Lululemon in Richmond, and it just created this massive community around London Marathon, it was lovely. A lot of people complain when they do a marathon that it was isolating and lonely, and they enjoyed the day, but they hated training, and it's really sad, because training can be six months or even more yeah. of your life. And it's something it can be that, really enjoyable. Yeah, you might have, obviously you're gonna have a bad run, you're gonna have a bad day, but overall it should be a really good experience. So we wanted to create that little community. So it was all free as always, and people came to meet us at Lou Lemon, um, um, uh, Richmond on Saturday, I think we did. Yeah. And we started from 13 miles and went all the way up to 22. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, kind of started that little group of runners. Yeah, uh, and some of which are now our paces. Yeah. And incredible, very, very good friends of ours, so that was kind of cool. Um, um, but then with the half iron man, when I started training for that, we actually started a cycle group as well with one of our best friends called Chloe. So she's Chloe in Motion on Instagram, so we had TTH in Motion was the name Boring. of our cycle club. Yeah. And she taught us both how to cycle. She did. Like, prop, like we could always, as we said, we grew up outside, like we knew how to cycle, but I just, we both just poodled around and didn't I really know. have to cycle fast. Um, and she very much like unlocked that skill for us. Yeah. Um, and we got more confident on the bike and, and it allowed me as well with my stress fracture to still do something. Um, they told me I could cycle, so I cycled every single day everywhere. Um, but I really enjoyed it. So TTH in Motion was in full swing. Indeed. I was cycling quite a lot. You were cycling even more and swimming <laughs> and running. Actually, I think you were cycling more than I was. Yeah. 
I like to cycle to the lake and then just swim, whereas then you would cycle around for a yeah. bit. Yeah, 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 and because I couldn't run, I was driving myself insane. Um, and then Em did her half Ironman and killed it and really enjoyed it. I loved it, honestly it was so much fun. Yeah. I think because it was really nice to go into something with no expectation at all, I did just want to enjoy it and finish. Um, and I loved that, it was really nice. Eye-opening and changing experience. And it was really <laughs> fun watching. Yeah, you got a good tan. Mm, watching is my thing, I think. And so then, yeah. since then, um, we haven't done any more like big challenges, really. No, no. Um, we went to Paris to do Paris Marathon. Again, that was really nice to go there and actually, well, I ended up with Pee Wee because she had a better London Marathon than I did the yeah. year before, um, which was completely accidental, but we both had a really good great run, run in Paris yeah. and really finally, like, enjoyed and embraced a road marathon. I mean you did actually miss out quite a big chunk there where we decided to run from London to Birmingham. I mean, that was pre Iron Man. That was pre Iron Man, yeah, <laughs> that was the January before. And we got asked in a random meet in Pret yeah. with this very strange man called Jamie. Uh, I fully blame him for everything there. Um, but we signed up to run five and a half marathons in five days, which was a truly eye-opening experience. Well, very we humbling. We uh, signed up to no, run yeah. five marathons in five days, and it turned ended up being longer. Ball. Yeah. So thank you again, Jamie, for that. Um, but it was absolutely incredible, and, and I think definitely a kind of um, uh, like project, or I guess plan, or um, structure that we'd like to yeah. try again at some point. Um, that kind of multi-stage oh, ultra. Happy. I don't know what yeah. you're looking for. <laughs> that kind of multi-stage ultra, but very much in our control and um, with hotels and pizza at every end point. No camping. Yeah, no camping. So yeah, anyway, again, fast forward, we went to Paris, we did Paris Marathon. Absolutely loved it. Paris was definitely a slightly different training journey because we were not training for speed. We were training for a much bigger project later in the year, um, which is fast approaching, and it that is. is Race to the Stones. Da, 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 which for those of you that don't know is a hundred kilometers along the Ridgeway which yes is supposed to be beautiful but that does not take away from the fact that we are looking at at least 12 hours of running indeed and eating way. yeah so um that's our next adventure um we're super excited about it it's very much one in the unknown we've never run that far before um we have no idea how our bodies are going to deal with it or how our minds are going to deal with it <laughs> how our friendship is going to deal with it um but we're doing it with our two coaches who are amazing individuals so it will definitely be an adventure and one that we will learn a lot from we of course of course have lots of things planned for after that. Um, we are looking towards next year and we're super excited to tell you guys what we're planning for next year. Um, but for now, we're gonna keep that to ourselves. Yeah. Hopefully it's given you a little bit of an insight into how we've got here. It's been about four and a half years yeah. now since we started Twice the Health. Um, and we do get asked a lot about yeah when we met each other, how we met each other, how we became healthy, which we didn't do. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, so hopefully you've answered a few of those questions. But if you have more questions, please feel free to drop them in the comments box below if you're still here because this has been quite a long, a long explanation. Time, yeah. Sorry. Uh, and don't forget to give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. We'll be back soon, I promise we won't let it be the slums. <laughs> <laughs>